Next up, working with the scene tree. We'll go through features and changes to Keyshot 6 when working with your models in Keyshot. Whenever you import a model in a Keyshot, uh, it's going to retain whatever your original hierarchy was, whether in a CAD system, that's with, with your assemblies, subassemblies, parts, and bodies, uh, or it's going to be with layers and shaders, depending on the type of modeling package that you're using. Something you can always do, though, whenever you import a model in a Keyshot, uh, and I'll go ahead and enable performance mode just by hitting this little icon right here, uh, I can always move parts. So we made some changes to the move tool to make it a little bit easier to use, and I want to call that out as well. Um, so if I select any individual piece of geometry, you'll know it's selected because it has a little orange highlight. If this needed to be moved for some reason, uh, let's say that was actually going to be in an on position right now. It's in an off position. I could go to the position tab and I can use the move tool. So some redesigns on the move tool that make this a little bit easier to use. First of all, you can enable and disable the type of movement or translation, rotation or scale that you want to use. Uh, before it was a lot easier to accidentally grab the wrong thing. So we've redesigned this so that it's harder to grab uh, the wrong thing. So for example, the translate no longer overlaps rotate, right? So if you don't want to worry about rotating or scaling, you can disable those. And now we can just move our, uh, our piece of geometry without having to worry about accidentally making the wrong kind of uh, transformation to it. As I'm moving, you'll also see that that translation is being respected. What's great about that is those are real life units. So if I get it close right here, let's say I move it over and that's about two millimeters and I hit the little green checkbox. And now I want to actually set that to be exactly two millimeters. I type in minus two. And because we're now working with real life units, that's been moved over two millimeters. So again, select the piece of geometry. I can go to the move tool and I can do whatever changes I want. Translate is going to be with these little arrows. So you can see it's snapping to our major axes. Uh, rotation is going to rotate our model. One new really cool thing that we've added in six is the ability to change your pivot point. So in Keyshot 5 and prior, if I rotated this part, it would only rotate around the object's center. Uh, that can be frustrating if you're working with something like a door or a flap or anything that actually has a pivot point or a hinge. What we can do here is for that piece of geometry, we can de define the pivot point. By default, it's its own self. So instead, I'll hit pick. Now I can actually select a part from my list here, or I can click in my real time view. And you'll notice that it gets this axis information. Now when I hit OK, you'll notice that the rotate tool has jumped down to this other piece of geometry so that when I use the rotate tool, it actually rotates around a pivot. Uh, I'm not going to actually apply that movement, but if you haven't seen that update in six, uh, the ability to change your pivot point is new and it's really, really nice. So I'll hit the little red X so that's not applied. And lastly, I want to talk about scaling. So scaling will change the scale of your product. Oh, and it looks like at that's still remembering that part right there. So I'll just hit reset, jump it back to this part. The scale you can change on an independent axis, either the red, the green, or the blue, so X, Y, Z, or if you grab the yellow cube here, it's going to scale proportionally. Um, so if you've ever wondered why it's just scaling on one axis, that's because the yellow is proportional and these smaller cubes here are going to be for each independent axis. So those are some updates on the move tool. We also have the ability to snap to pivot, snap to lower object, um, and snap to ground, which has been in here for a while. Um, but yeah, so those are some changes to the move tool. Another thing I want to mention while we're working here is working or actually locking geometry. So let's say I was working with the model and there was some part that wasn't always going to be visible. Let's say something like this, right? I can select this little part. And if I hit the checkbox, then it hides that part. And I'm sure you've done this before to get to other parts or hide things that weren't essential at the time. But if I right hit, if I right click and hit show all parts, that part's going to pop back up. The new addition that we've made is the ability to select a piece of geometry. Now I can right click on that piece of geometry in my scene tree and I can lock or hide and lock. If I hit hide and lock, then it's going to lock that part. And you'll notice if I scroll over a little bit here that that icon has a little lock next to it. So that means now if I right click and hit show all parts, that part is not coming back up. 
Also, I'm not allowed to change the material. So that locking will change, or excuse me, that locking will lock the position, orientation, materials, and visibility state. Uh, we'll keep that locked for now, uh, but that's just good to know that you can lock parts. So if you don't want to delete it, uh, but you're tired of it popping up every time you're working in the scene, you can always just hide and lock something. Okay, so those are a couple quick, cha quick changes to uh, the scene tree, some additions that we've made. Uh, what's also good to keep in mind while we're working with our scene is this materials tab. So what is this materials tab? Well, these are the materials that are currently being used in our Keyshot scene. So we can either look at it in a list view or an icon view. And you'll notice these are just the default colors that came over from NX, from our modeling application. Ideally, when you're working with your Keyshot scene, you want to replace all of these existing materials with a Keyshot materials. But not everybody knows what that tab is. And this tab is all the materials that are currently used in our scene. So let's go ahead and talk about applying materials and how we work with our materials in our library in Keyshot. Stay tuned to learn about applying realistic materials to your model. For more tutorials, quick tips, and webinar recordings, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can learn more at keyshot.com learning. Thank you for watching.